Hey FTC teams, Lockett here, alumni from FTC Team 3208, The Hyperlinks. In this video, I'll be going over how to string linear slide mechanisms like the ones I have in front of me. We'll begin from the basics and build up through a few different ways you can do stringing for linear slides, ultimately ending on the spell-driven linear slide mechanism that's both fast and super efficient. This video is part of a larger project that I'm working on to creating efficient linear slide mechanisms out of Belt. If you're interested in seeing more about what I've been doing, there's a link in the description to my website. Starting with the most simple design, this is a single stage lift with a string attached to the first stage. Now obviously, when I pull the string up, it's going to lift the slide, and when I lower the string, it's going to lower the slide. Now what we can then do is put it around a pulley like this, and now we do just the opposite. We pull the string down and it lifts, and then we release the string and it lowers. And if all these slides are confusing, this demonstration may help. So each of these gray boxes represents a slide with this one being fixed to the ground. So what I was just doing is I was pulling this string and then it revolved around the pulley on top and it was fixed to the bottom on this side. And so what ended up happening is then the first stage slide would lift up. So then the next thing you can do is continue adding stages on. So you could add as many as you want. I'm going to stick with just a second stage for simplicity. So what I did is now it's tethered to the last stage and then it does a second loop over the first stage back down and then back to where we started. So now when I pull it, you'll notice it extends the first stage and then it moves on to extending the second stage. So like last time, looking at the diagram, we have the same beginning where the string goes up. It does a loop over the top pulley, but now this time, instead of being fixed to the bottom pulley, it does another loop and then it goes back up to the top and then it gets fixed to the last stage. So this is where it would be fixed to. And then like you saw, because the first stage has less weight, it was the first one to move up. And then once it got to about its max height, then the second stage began lifting up. So for a lot of rookie teams, this is a good slide to use. It's fast to make and it's pretty simple compared to some other slides. It has some drawbacks though, like the amount of string it takes to be able to lift, which generally means it can't lift as fast. The next configuration that we'll look at is what's known as a cascading slide. So what we've got is a similar setup to the last one, except we uh, don't have just one string going across, but instead we have two. So we have one string attached to the first stage, simply going over the pulley of this one. But then the second stage, what we have is tethered to the, the second stage, going over top of the first stage, and then fixed to the base. And what this allows us to do is extend each slide the same amount relative to the previous slide. And you can theoretically make these as many slides long as you'd like. The slide can get a little more confusing, but hopefully the diagram can help. So just like we saw with the very first slide, we have the first string, labeled string one, with exactly the same configuration. So fixed, on this point, going over top of this side, and then being tensioned like this. And so when we move just this one string, what we saw is this first stage would move up. But now the change that we made is we have the second string, which is in magenta, string two. And what this one does is it's fixed to the last stage. It goes over top of the middle stage, and then it's fixed to the first stage. So now when we pull it up, it's going to um, tension this, basically. It's going to put tension into the magenta slide on this side, which will cause this one to want to rise. And then we have both of these stages lifting at the same time. So the advantage with this is that we have just one string. And no matter how many slides you add on, it's always going to be the same amount of string uh, displacement that you have to extend it. And so this can be good because it means you have to wind up less string and generally you can do it faster. 
It's also good because we have the same amount of strain on the motor the whole way because it's no longer extending the lightest piece and then extending the heaviest. It's instead extending all of them at the same time. So now this is where it gets fun. What I've got is the exact same setup we had for the first slide, but instead of string, I have belt. So it's tethered from the first stage, just going up over this pulley. So when I pull up, it lifts. And when I go down over the pulley, it also lifts. And then if you wanna see the diagram of how this works, it's really simple. Uh, just this time, instead of string, we have a belt. And then once again, it is fixed to this point. So then the next phase of this slide would be to continue that belt loop to go all the way around and make a complete loop like what I've shown here. So instead of it just letting go up top, it's now gone back around the bottom pulley and then attaches back to the base to make a full loop. So now when I pull it up, once again, it moves up, but now it's constrained in the opposite direction as well. So unlike before when gravity was just pulling it down, now I can actively pull the belt up and it causes it to lower. And then if we want to look, see what this looks like in the diagram, it can be a little deceiving, but at the bottom here, this is going to be tethered to the first stage. So this is fixed. And what that means is when we pull this belt down, it's going to move this side of the belt up. And because this stage is fixed to the belt there, it's going to make this whole stage move up. And so now the final thing to do is to add any additional stages on. So I've added one more stage just to show how this would expand into multiple. And I've got the exact same setup as I did with the first stage on the second stage, having a belt running through the length of it and then attaching to the last stage. Now the one difference in doing this extra belt is we also have to attach it to the base stage. So I have it attached to the top here and between those mounts, it now moves up the exact same way as the cascading slide, but now it's no longer just fed by gravity going down. We can also move the belt down and then it lowers everything. And if we want to see what this looks like in the diagram, you'll notice the first stage will be the same, mounted from this onto the first stage slide, and then same for the magenta, the second um, belt would be mounted to the third stage. And that key piece that I was talking about to make them so they all cascade together is mounting the uh, magenta belt onto the base stage so that it's fixed. And so this may look a little different than before, but it's fundamentally the same as when we had the cascading slide. So just instead of um, string, the string would have gone like this being fixed to the third stage. It would have gone over top of this stage and then it was fixed to the base stage. And this is exactly the same as what the belt's doing, just now being a full loop across. Hopefully this video helped to demystify how to string lifts in FTC. If you wanna see the CAD model to be able to make this lift yourself, or to see some additional info, I've got a link in the description. Thanks teams, and good luck this season.